initially the call was clear as a bell. Um, Peter Mayberry, a missionary in Togo, uh, who was supported by our church, came and did his presentation. And there was no question. It was almost audible that I had to act on it. And Aaron was definitely hearing the same thing. So we signed up for that short-term trip. And uh, it was incredible to apply the skills that I have in construction to um, the field. When I came home, uh, I presented my idea about going back, and I believe Aaron had the same one mm -hmm. when I was gone, so it was so clear and it was great. I was doing just like devotions, and it was just like the Lord said, He's like, Are, are you willing to go? My blog is even called Please God, Not Africa. <laughs> and then as soon as he got off the plane, I was like, I know what he's going to say. And he's like, We've been invited to come back. Yes, we totally have to do this. <laughs> Pretty practical. Uh, when landing in Togo, I was able to just pick right back up and start building houses. Um, there's a guest house that's there for short-termers to come. So we have short-term doctors that are specialists or nurses that come or any sort of person that wants to come and do short-term ministry, they live in this guest house. And so they needed someone to oversee the guest house. So that became my role. Around December of 2012, Kylie complained of a sore foot. And we just thought she'd been playing soccer, no big deal. She was maybe 11 years old at the time. She continued to just say that it was hurting over the next couple of days. So we took her to the little um, local hospital and they took an x-ray and said, oh, it's not broken. So we were concerned. We called down to the Southern Hospital, which is another ABWE hospital in Togo, but it's nine hours away. And they said, if these symptoms don't seem to go away in the next couple of days, you need to bring her here. We drove the nine hours, she and I, to the Southern Hospital, only to find out that she was much more sick. She had a septic joint, and from there, they did a bunch of procedures on her foot, and it just didn't seem to get better under those conditions. And it was about February that they said, listen, we can't help you anymore, you need to go home, and she needs um, surgery, and she needs to get on some, some serious medication. So she and I flew home with our youngest son, Teddy, while Nate stayed in Togo with the three boys. The type of infection she had is very hard to kill. And so she needed antibiotics through an IV for a year. She eventually took time, got better, and, and God has healed her and has used that in her life in amazing ways. It was a real surprise to us when the door closed. Like we were this family that was like, we were digging our heels and we were gonna stay and we were gonna you know, kind of push through this. And then when he just closed it and said, you, you can't be in Togo. That was a really hard time for us as just like, what do you mean we can't stay in Togo, you know? It's just the physical need of having to go back and the love for those guys that I had worked with and they were continuing to work there. It's so easy to tie in to that situation because we just love it, our heart's there. The Hospital of Hope is located in the north part of Togo, and that is a very unreached part of the whole area, not just that part of Togo, but that region in terms of West Africa. How it works is they come to the hospital, they meet with a physician, and then they'll be asked, would you like to talk with a chaplain? And the chaplains are the ones that really are the frontline people presenting the gospel. And the chaplains are mostly Togolese people, so they can speak the heart language of um, the patient. Once they have the gospel presented, if they're staying at the hospital, then those chaplains will continue to meet with them and discuss things. They can watch the Jesus film in one of their many languages and then just building relationships with the hospital staff. So it's amazing to see like the story, just story after story of how people are coming to faith because of the ministry there. Current needs in Mongo include more housing for the uh, short-term nurses that are coming. Um, it's good to have them on compound. So there's a need for one more duplex that will house the nurses that come. They can live on site. Uh, their shifts end in the middle of the night and whatever, so they have to negotiate the roads in the dark. So instead, they can just walk from the hospital to um, the duplex. So we're planning to go back again 
and hopefully in 2021 to continue the work at the hospital. So they still need somebody to run the guest house. So that would be my role when we go back. And then due to the fact that the hospital is already over full with patients, they definitely need more additions on the hospital. Uh, so Nate would be doing construction again. I would say one of the greatest joys experienced in serving there um, was pouring into those guys' lives and having it reciprocated. God working in my life um, is most evident when I am committed completely to the mission. I think for me, you want to answer that call and, and return to the place where you really feel God is using you the most. So moving forward um, in our commitment to serving the Lord and hopefully getting back to Togo as soon as possible. Um, that's our timing, but we're trusting God in His perfect timing. Mm -hmm. So to all the partners that have worked with us in the past and encouraged us in the past, we want to thank you. Mm -hmm. And to all those that we're going to get to know, um, we look forward to working with you and seeing God work in your lives and in ours. Um, to move the mission forward. So we're committed mm -hmm. and uh, we'd love for you to join us in this.